Trello has this fun animation on their checklist that happens whenever you complete the last item uh, in a list. And sometimes you can get some different animations here. And uh, today we're gonna recreate these animations. So I've got this little clone here built with React and Tailwind. And uh, we can see right here, we don't have any animation, just some Tailwind classes and some React state. And so we wanna animate these guys uh, with frame or motion. Now your first thought may be to use state-based animation because hey, all these should run when they are in a checked state. But if you think about it, uh, they're checked right now and they shouldn't be animating or they shouldn't be in any final state. We really want to trigger the animation when we complete the final item. So when we change the final item, that's when we want to run the animation. So this is a better fit for an event based animation rather than a state based animation. So right here in our event handler, when we handle the change, we want to animate the items and uh, framer motion has some cool hooks to help us run imperative animations. After an event occurs, you may have seen use animation controls, but we're actually going to use a brand new one called use animate. Uh, this was just added and it's kind of the successor to use animation controls. And it works like this. It gives us a ref, and an animate function. And uh, we can come down to where we're mapping over our items. And we're gonna actually come and stick this ref on the parent div right here, because we're gonna see that animate gives us some cool utilities for animating children. So uh, now we have this animate function that is scoped to this div right here. And uh, we can go ahead and animate the child inputs just like this. Remember, we want these to kind of grow and bounce around and uh, those are the only input elements that are a child of our div. This is just a good old CSS selector, so it's gonna work for us for now. Let's just try something, opacity 0.5, and see if this works. So uh, right after we handle the change, we go down to 0.5. Of course, we don't wanna stay there. Let's just try one to 0.5 back to one, just like that. And now every time we click, they blink. So if you've never seen uh, this array syntax before, it's kind of a keyframes and it's how we trigger these kind of keyframe animations with frame or motion. We could change this to scale and go from one to 1 1.5 back to one. And uh, now we've got some growth going on. It's a little aggressive. Let's change this to 1.25. And um, you can see how we can start to tweak this. So uh, our next step is that we don't want this to run every time we change any one of these items, we only want it to run when we've checked off the last one. So how do we know that? Well, if we look here in our uh, event handler, we see we calculate our new items and then we just set them in React state. So uh, if every one of these new items is checked, that means we wanna run our animation, right? So if our new items uh, dot every, this is a, an array method we can use to check that every item is checked. And if so, Let's go ahead and animate our inputs. Look at that. So now we can change these. And once we get the last one, we see they animate. Pretty cool. Let's come here and tweak this. The second argument is the good old transition options from Framer Motion. So we can make this like a duration of 0.3. And we can start to tweak this to make this feel better. Uh, but really, uh, duration is not enough. We want these to stagger to really pull off that effect from Trello. And if we come back here to these transition options, we're gonna see we have a delay property right here. And this uh, takes a number as well. So if we were to just put in you know, 0.5, something like that, that's gonna apply equally to all of the children. But uh, there's another utility that is new to frame or motion called stagger. And if we put 0.1, import this from frame or motion, check this out. Pretty cool. So this is automatically going to stagger our animation by 0.1 seconds um, more for each element uh, the further down in the rate it is. So this basically takes a static number or a function that passes in the index of the children. So super handy and this stagger uh, helper is exactly what we want with the exception of the fact that it always starts at the top and we really want it to start on the last completed index. 
Well, if we look at the second argument to stagger, we're going to see there's some cool options here. And the one we want is from. Now from takes in a few fun values. We can start from the first element, which is how it works right now. We can start from the last. So if we were to click, we're going to start the staggering from the last, or we can start from the center. So uh, this is going to start right from the center of these items. So that's, those are kind of handy just to know, uh, but it also actually takes in an index. So if we were to put in two, then we're going to start from the third element. Look at that. That's the second index in the array. So now all we need to do is find the index of the item that we just finished checking off. And if we can, we can pass that to from, and we should have our final effect. Well, we have our new items here, which are all completed, but we still have access uh, to the previous items, right? Because we're kind of in this render frame right here. So we should be able to get the last completed item by looking at the current items and finding the index of the item that was not checked. So find, you might be used to using find that returns an actual object, right? But we just want the index. So we're gonna find index. This is gonna give us a number that we should be able to pass in to from just like that. Check that out. How fun is that? Right where we click, this kicks off. And that is the core of the effect. I think it's pretty cool. All right, this one feels a little bit slow. Let's make this a little faster. Let's go over to Trello and just kind of give it, okay, that looks pretty good. I think there's a little bit, actually that's pretty close. I think it's a little bit faster. Let's do two five. The stagger feels a little bit long too. Let's do maybe 0.05. Yeah, that's a little bit too fast. So you can tweak this, have fun with it. It's a really fun effect. Uh, maybe we'll kick this back up to three, five, something like that. And uh, now what we want to do is add the other two effects. So we've got this kind of bounce right here. But if we click these enough, there we see a little shimmy, a little left and right. So let's go ahead and copy this. And I'm just going to comment this out. And let's work on this shimmy. And instead of scaling this, we want to use the X property to just kind of move it left and right a little bit. So we'll start it off right in the center. Let's go to the right by five pixels, left by five pixels, and then uh, we'll come right back to the center. Okay, that's a little aggressive. Let's just try two, something like that. That's not bad. Let's see if we can get this again. That's a wiggle. We got to get that one in there as well. Okay, that's pretty close. Maybe three pixels would do it. It's a little bit more aggressive. Go back down to two and let's, let's just bump this duration to 0.5, something like this. Bump this back up to 0.1. Just kind of having fun with this. Ah, it's a little bit slow, isn't it? 0.4. I like that. That's fun. So now we got the shimmy, we got the bounce, and of course we need the shake where we uh, kind of rotate them. So uh, instead of moving them left and right, let's use rotate. These are all coming from frame or motion. They're just uh, animating CSS properties. And so this is going to be degrees. So we want to start out at zero degrees. Let's go like 15 degrees, negative 15 degrees, and then back down to zero. Ooh, that's pretty fun. That looks pretty good. Let's see. Okay, that was the shimmy. Let's see if we can get the shake. Come on. There's the bounce. We got to get the shake. No? There we go. No, that wasn't the shake. We, we got to get the shake. Come on. Oh, that was a delay. I think I broke it. There we go. Okay, that was a little bit more subtle. So we've gone a little bit too much here. Let's bring this down to 10 degrees. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. And maybe, honestly, I might even bump this up to 0.5 because it was much more of a subtle. Yeah, it's more playful. You don't expect it, right? 
You're like, it's Friday. I finished five, six, and seven. Oh, that feels good. All right. That was nice. Time to hit the bars. So uh, now that we got our shimmy shake and bounce, let's go ahead and randomize these a little bit. I'm just going to let random equals math.random. And uh, if random is less than a third, this is a number between zero and one. So uh, if it's less than a third, we'll go ahead and bounce. Else, if random is less than two thirds, we'll shimmy. Otherwise, we will shake. And uh, let's take a look at this. Refresh, finish off two. Ah, that felt good. Four, five, six. There we go, a little shimmy. See if we can get some shake going on here. There's a shake. All right, so there you have it. Trello checklist animation uh, with some imperative event-based animation using the new use animate hook. Very cool uh, stuff coming to Framer Motion. Again, you could do this before, but this is kind of a streamlined API. And uh, I really like how nice and clean this is. You can just scope it to this tree and we get this cool stagger helper. There's a bunch more stuff obviously already in the docs and coming, but uh, that's, that's a quick introduction to use animate. So uh, if you liked it and you want to learn more Framer Motion, I actually have a full course over at buildui.com. So if you want to check that out, please do. If you have any questions about this or anything else, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.